Um, so, as, as Tony said, my name is Neil Murphy. I'm the Senior Built Environment Advisor at the Centre for Excellence in Universal Design. So, my, my background is in architect. Um, and what I'm going to do is take you through our latest publication, or one of our latest publications, which is Building for Everyone. Um, so, I'll, I'll just uh, walk through that, and uh, hopefully, it will be an interesting presentation for you. That's the title, sorry. Skip that one. Um, Building for Everyone, uh, which I'll refer to as BFE from now on, um, what we tried to do is we tried to look at, it was previously published in 1998 and 2000, I think 2002, as a design guide for built environment professionals and the general public, um, how to make buildings accessible. So it was decided then to take a universal design approach to the revision to the series, or to, sorry, to the book. So the one book is now being turned into 10 booklets. Um, it informs about universal design. It promotes universal design within the built environment, and it's aimed at professionals working in the built environment and the general public. So those professionals would be yourselves, access officers, etc. Um, there is an increase in technical drawings and photographs. Um, what you see here on, on the slide here is, is the listing of the, the various booklets, and you can see the colours uh, throughout the design of the revision. There's a there's a language, the a design language to it. So we use colours to highlight and to, uh, um, to denote the, the various booklets. So they range from external environment and approach, entrances and horizontal circulation, vertical circulation, internal environment and services, sanitary facilities, facilities and buildings, building types, building management, planning and index and terminology. So as you can see, it's quite an extensive and uh, universal uh, area covered there. So there's the covers, um, and as I said, we, we thought long and hard, obviously we are the Centre for Excellence in Universal Design, and we are uh, very aware that in order to appeal certainly to design professionals, we have to actually, our designs have to look good. So a lot of thought and effort was put into um, what we think is a, a great final um, set of booklets. So the building for everyone has been revised to include universal design principles, and as I mentioned, this is the third version the first version in 98 and the second in 2002, and they were the most downloaded uh, documents from the NDA's website. Um, just to cover what universal design means under the synopsis of the Disability Act, universal design refers to the design and composition of environments that can be accessed, understood, and used to the greatest extent possible by all people, regardless of their age, size, ability, or disability. Now, if you cover age, size, ability, or disability in your design, whatever it is, you have basically cornered the market, so it's not just uh, hearts and flowers involved here. There, there is a kind of also a mercenary side to it which appeals to business. So good design means you, you make more money. That's just a fact. So BFE references Part M 2010, the revised uh, uh, access and use building regulations, but it also goes beyond that. Um, we think that BFE is good practice. Well, we know it is good practice. The uh, dimensions and references throughout BFE are based on combined guidance from many of the international standards and guidelines. We looked at standards from Norway, we looked at standards from Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada, Lebanon. Uh, so we, we, <clears throat> we like to think that we covered a, a, a wide area of standards, international standards. And within the booklets, a range has been given instead of a single optimum dimension as this provides more flexibility to designers. <clears throat> this was major feedback that we received from built environment professionals that they want to be, be given a flexibility rather than having a rigid uh, set of rules and regulations. The objectives of the series of booklets are to identify and promote best practice with regard to universal design of the built and external environment, provide best practice guidelines while recognizing existing regulations in Ireland, provide guidelines that are usable by and accessible to the target audience, which is everybody, and promote the achievement of universal design in Ireland. Um, I'm not going to go through this slide too, too much. We did an extensive focus consultation process. We contacted 50, 56 organizations and individuals. The overall response we got, the general comments, was overall agreement and positive response received from participants. Uh, specific responses concerning elements of text, images, and drawings were received. And some examples of the organizations were the, the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland, Irish Wheelchair Association, Office of Public Works, and National Council for the Blind Ireland, etc. Um, as I said, extensive cross-checking took place with the Department of the Environment on the continuity and compatibility of the revised Part M and the new 
building for everyone. We have engaged extensively, as it says, with the Department of Environment and we're delighted to be able to do so and, and we feel we have a good relationship with them which, which we will use as we move forward with our, uh, our next set of documents that we're going to be working on this year and in the years to come. Um, so we ensure that in no area does BFE contradict Part M, rather what it is offered is a range of dimensions similar or above Part M, thus allowing greater flexibility to the designer and also providing the platform for universal design for all people in Ireland, regardless of age, size, ability or disability. This sheet is basically just a, a sample of the cross-check that we did. We had um, uh, we were working with uh, Owen O'Shea, an architect, and he's also a, an ERCSET doctorate student, which is Irish Research Council of Science, Engineering and Technology. And he's based at Trinity House, and Owen's help was invaluable in, in making sure that our uh, new set of booklets um, met and went beyond national and international standards in order to provide a correct set of guidance for designers and for the general public. So the question is, why universal design? People are diverse. I mean, that's a given. But sometimes when it comes to designers, they don't, they don't think of that. So it's our job to, to remind them and reinforce that. Some people are left-handed and some are right-handed. Uh, people vary in their age, size, and functional capabilities. Illness or disability, whether temporary or permanent, can also affect characteristics such as people's mobility, dexterity, reach, balance, strength, touch, knowledge, understanding, memory, or sense of direction. So all these are very, very important uh, issues. Um, just getting a bit of feedback there from uh, the, someone, someone's dog having a good drink, but that's, I, 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 could, uh, I can uh, relate to that. It's, it's pretty hot up here. Um, uh, I'm delighted to, ha to have um, him or her uh, join us today. Him, very good, hello. Uh, so universal design assumes, we've got some images here up on the screen which shows uh, a woman on a set of crutches and she's uh, maneuvering down a ramp and she's with her boyfriend or husband. So she's obviously injured her leg. Um, you have an image of a uh, pregnant woman. You have an image of uh, a person holding a map. In other words, they, they look like they're lost. And then you have an image of someone carrying uh, two heavy uh, shopping bags, plastic bags. So what we're trying to say is that universal design assumes, or not we're trying to say, what we are saying is that every person experiences barriers, uh, reduced functioning, some form of disability, whether it be temporary or permanent, at some stage in life. That's just part of life. Um, so people should be able to find their way easily, understand how to use building facilities such as intercoms or lifts, and know what is a pedestrian facility. And they should know where they may encounter traffic within or and without the building. So I'm just going to cover, there are seven principles of universal design, but I'm only going to cover one because I think it's an important one. Uh, principle one is equitable use, and we have three images here. One of a person using a wheelchair, um, using a level entry tram or uh, rail uh, car. Um, pretty much the same image is showing a mother with a stroller uh, gaining entry to a similar uh, tram or underground uh, uh, subway uh, train. And then there's an image of an older woman pushing a pram and also pulling a uh, wheeled luggage. Um, so the first image shows a person using a wheelchair and they're able to gain access easily to uh, the tram car. Um, a lot of designers won't even relate or understand or, or remember that you know, when people have babies, when they have children, that they need to be able to do very similar actions that someone using a wheelchair uses. So the idea is if you design, if you design out all the problems from the very start, there won't be any problems and there won't be the cost and problems of retrofitting, which, is, which can cost a huge amount of money to governments and to local authorities. The other image of the woman pushing uh, the, the stroller and then uh, um, carrying or sorry, uh, leading the uh, wheeled luggage. It, I mean, obviously, this is a woman who's, who's moving fast through a uh, busy area, but she seems confident and, and at, at ease of what she's doing. And the thing to note is that the wheeled luggage there, this year is the 40th anniversary of, the wheel, of putting wheels on luggage. I mean, humanity has had wheels as part of transport for thousands of years, and it's only 40 years ago that someone thought about putting wheels on a suitcase. So. That is where universal design, what it's about and where it's going. It's about thinking beyond uh, barriers and, the, and particular boxes to provide good design. That is pretty much all it is. It's, it's not rocket science. Um, a quote here from uh, a person called Welch is saying that universal design is not a euphemism for accessibility, as access features such as ramps and lifts are potent symbols of separateness, and universal design is not about separating people. 
So put simply, we should be able to enter via the same door in all aspects of society, literally or metaphorically, but it should always be handled professionally in all stages of the process, and because you are here today, that is reinforcing that particular point. These are the covers again, just reinforcing, and what I'm going to do very quickly is go through each one of the booklets and just show you a flavor of what's involved. So booklet one is external environment and approach, and as you can see, what we tried to do with regards to each of the booklets was include images of uh, uh, families of, of people in, that may not have been used in design um, booklets uh, before. So we have an image of a, of a father pushing a stroller along a busy street. He's dressed in a suit. He looks very corporate and it looks like a financial area. So it's, it's uh, alluding to the fact that this man is busy, uh, but he still has time for his child. He needs to have a wide footpath that's, that's accessible. Then there's an image of a family. Uh, there's uh, four kids and the parents, and they're standing on a very wide pedestrian footpath. It's bright, it's colorful, and this kind of, this is what we wanted for the series. And then we have um, a very clear, uh, well, easily understood drawing, and this drawing shows accessible car parking spaces, and the dimensions are clear. The text uh, involved in what a designer or, or a stakeholder would want to see is, is all there, hopefully. So booklet two, the next slide, is entrances and horizontal circulation. This slide shows the cover of uh, booklet two. It shows uh, a drawing with dimensions of entrance doorways. Um, it shows uh, uh, three uh, photographs. One is of a bright and airy atrium in a local authority uh, with level en entry access. The next slide shows a person in a wheelchair at a split level reception desk and there is a, an induction loop sign uh, for the person, uh, for people using the desk to, to realize that there's an induction loop. Um, and then there's an image of a, a guide dog user um, tracing her finger across a, a sign that has got um, uh, raised lettering uh, in, in a local authority. It's, it's in, actually in Cork. It's a, a photo of uh, Lane Kennedy from the Irish Guide Dogs Association. So or Guide Dogs Association of Ireland, sorry. The next uh, slide we have here is booklet three, which is uh, vertical circulation. Um, this booklet aims to encourage designers to provide universal design solutions for the entrances and the horizontal circulation within buildings that look beyond the recommended requirements of <coughs> national building regulations. I'm not going to repeat that last part of the sentence in the next slides, because that's pretty much par for the course for the rest of our uh, the booklets. Um, there are three photos or three images. One is of a, uh, a, a clear glass lift, an accessible lift in a building. Um, it's, it's a level entry. It looks, it appears very, well, it is easy to use, easy to understand, and it gives access to the floors above uh, the ground floor. Uh, the next image is of a, a travelator in an airport. Um, it's a very modern looking design. Uh, the travelator has good clear signage uh, for passengers to, to make their terminals. And then there is a drawing of an internal stairs that is very clearly drawn and with good dimensions. And this is what designers need when they're in a busy office. They need to be able to access the information quickly. And we hope we have achieved that goal. Uh, booklet four, the next slide is uh, internal environment and services. And this aims to increase awareness of and to encourage designers to identify the needs of all those who require good internal environment and layouts within buildings in order to undertake daily activities. So there's three pictures. One is of a very well-designed signage uh, post in, um, I think it's in Cork uh, City Council's uh, offices. Um, and there is also an image of a reception desk with a large indu induction loop and uh, a receptionist sitting behind the desk. Um, and then there is a drawing of an uh, arrow placement uh, on directional signs, which, uh, you know, if you've ever gone into a building and the arrows aren't correct, you can get yourself lost pretty easy. And that's, that's for people who've got uh, perfect vision. So. Um, Good design is always important. Booklet five, the next slide, is sanitary facilities. This booklet aims to encourage designers to provide universal design solutions for sanitary facilities that look beyond the minimum regulations. So there's three images here, and uh, two of them are, were generously donated by an interior architect in uh, England called Alison Wright. And Alison designs what we feel are fantastic bathrooms. Um, the first image shows a large family bathroom. Um, all the sanitary facilities, the, the toilet and the sink, are off the floor. And the, the bath has uh, um, a good space, a toe space, uh, for people to be able to lean over. Um, the bathroom is a wet room. Uh, she designed the bathroom for a family of kids. And uh, the mother used to wash the kids and the dog on muddy, muddy days when they came in, just on the floor of the, uh, of the bathroom. She, they didn't need to use the bath because it's got underfloor heating. The, the floor dries quickly. Um, and it also makes the bathroom clean. You're cleaning the bathroom all the time, every time you have a shower. 
The next is a, um, a shower unit that she designed for a customer of hers, and it looks like a, a shower unit that you get in a hotel, but that, this is in a domestic house, and it's something we'd all like. I mean, you know, being able to see the, what the image shows is, is a very nice tiling, very expensive tiling, a seat, um, a nice screen, uh, level, level entry, and it's uh, got underfloor heating, so very comfortable, easy to use. Um, thanks, Ruth. And then there's a, a drawing of a, an accessible shower with a WC. The next slide is uh, booklet six, facilities and buildings. And this aims to encourage designers to provide universal design solutions for facilities and equipment within buildings that go beyond the minimum regs. And there's three images here. One is of a reception desk, one is of a vending machine, and the other is of key dimensions for general seating areas. So just important information in clear, easy to understand drawings. Booklet seven is building types. Um, this booklet aims to increase awareness of and to encourage designers to identify the needs of all those who require access to a wide range of buildings and spaces to undertake daily activities. There's about seven, seven images on this uh, slide. One is of a boardwalk in Carrick and Shannon. One is of a public library. One is of a woman sitting with her stroller at a taxi rank. The other one is of a park, and the other one is, uh, is of a mother and child in a, a kind of a field by the side of a mountain. So what we're trying to reinforce is that you should be able to access uh, external spaces as well as public spaces. Booklet, booklet eight, the next slide, is building management. Uh, this booklet aims to encourage building managers to provide effective building management and universal design solutions for a wide range of buildings that look beyond the minimum regs. So there's three images here, one of terminology list of terms used in this particular booklet. We have a checklist shown, which is a green uh, panel with a tick mark, which you should uh, try and meet all the checklist requirements. And then there's an example of uh, priority uh, ratings for buildings. The final booklet uh, of, of the 10, okay, this is number nine, is planning and policy. This booklet covers issues around the planning process, including development plans, planning policies, development control, planning conditions, and how the concept of universal design can add value to the planning process in Ireland. Again, there's three images. One is of a boardwalk uh, indicating level access with a checklist below it. Uh, the other is universal design with a pre-application checklist. And the next one is a venue checklist for consultation events. There's no point running a consultation event if entrance to the building is purely stairs. You're on a hiding to nothing straight away. So what this is supposed to do is to help those involved in the planning process in Ireland to be able to do it in a better way using universal design principles. The final slide regarding the booklets is uh, booklet 10, which is index and terminology. And this provides an overarching index and list of terminologies used in the Building for Everyone series. Uh, the next few slides I'll run through quickly because I'm on short on time. Just shows a flavor of what the interior of the booklets look like. Again, we use color in all of the, the booklets. Each, co each booklet had a particular color, which was used as banner heads and uh, highlighting particular pieces of text. Lots of images, an image of a woman with a stroller, an image of a split level reception desk, and an image of a person using a wheelchair in an airport. Again, uh, next slide shows another uh, example, photo of a man with a stroller, which you saw earlier on and a drawing of a parking space in a garage for a person using a wheelchair in a car. Um, again, final slide on this is shows an older woman using a checkout desk in a supermarket. So again, we're trying to involve age, size, ability, and disability throughout the series. Um, sorry, another slide just again showing another flavor with checklists. There's checklists throughout the series which are there to help you um, ensure that you've met the requirements of the design that you're trying to do. Um, sorry, another one I'm caught with that, uh, and final slide. So here's what the, uh, the, the booklets look like. Um, they are available free, however, we don't have the budget to be able to post them out to people. So if you want a, a set, please contact us at the center, and we'd be delighted for you to come in. And in a way for us, it's great because we get to meet the people who are getting the series. Or you can design it as they are free to download on our website, uh, www.universaldesign.ie forward slash building for everyone. Um, they are accessible PDFs, so for people with visual difficulties, they are fully accessible. Um, if you have any issues, let us know. We hope we've covered everything. There's the series again. This slide shows the, the 10 booklet uh, covers. Um, just a final slide is basically covering what work uh, that we are involved in in the centre regarding the built environment in 2012 and beyond. We have just uh, got uh, the NDA's board uh, to approve uh, the final draft of a piece of research that we carried out with Trinity House, which is a building construction research center in Trinity College. 
looking at shared spaces, shared surfaces, and home zones, uh, research and recommendations for Ireland. This is a very exciting piece of research, and we're delighted how it's, it's come about. And it's hopefully going to provide better urban spaces for all people in Ireland. And uh, we, we like to think that it's the first one in the world involving universal design, so that's hopefully going to be on our website soon. We are near this uh, tail end of Universal Design Homes Guidelines for Ireland, which should be completed in the next month. Um, so keep an eye out on our website for that. We are uh, currently on eTender website. We are look, uh, looking for tenders for Universal Design Life Cycle Campuses for Ireland. This is basically campuses on the one side involving uh, preschool, <coughs> primary, secondary, uh, third level, um, and older people's education in the one particular campus. It means you're making savings regarding uh, uh, carbon footprint, um, cost of travel, transport, road networks, etc. And the final piece is research and recommendations, which we are just building the tender for now for Dementia and Home Design for Ireland, looking at new build and retrofit universal design guidance. Uh, we feel, as, as well as many people do, that we all would like to live in our homes till the end of our days. So we hope that this piece of research will be very helpful for built environment uh, professionals. So that's me. Thank you very much. A bit of a rush through there. Um, that's our website, universaldesign.ie. Uh, you can get us there, and then the forward slash building for everyone, and my email, nmurphy at cud.ie. Thanks. Thank you.